Bonjour mon petit chiffle, Amber here and happy December. Today is December 1st. It's the last day, last, what? It is the start of the last month of the year. We are in the grand finale of 2021. I cannot believe it. This year has been something else. Anyway, I am sitting down and just taking the opportunity right now to start my December vlog. This month I'm hoping to read at least four books. We'll see, last year I managed, and last month I managed seven. I'm starting with, starting today, I didn't, I'm starting with For the Wolf by Hannah Witten. I'm about 10 pages into this and I've saved this this whole time for winter chilly winter icy season i plan on reading this and the wolf and the wolf wolf in the woodsman this december so um i'll let you know the other books i plan on reading later <laughs> Here's a fun thing that's happened today. <clears throat> She's been chopped. And it's so funny to me that I spent this entire year tracking my hair growth after my mom cut it last year just for it to be exactly where we started. Back to square one, but she cute. She cute. It's like 11, almost 11.30. I just got home from getting my hair done. I have a plethora of complaints, one of which, and probably the most of which being I couldn't read today. Not necessarily because I was getting my hair done, mostly because I also have cramps and I just felt like I was dying today. So I read, I think, two pages of For the Wolf and I'm kind of nervous because I feel like I'm not retaining anything. I don't know if that's just like what my brain's do my doing right now or if it's me and the book aren't vibing, but I'm hoping when I get comfortable, I get food in me. We'll see. I'm gonna go to go, I know the go, and like tomorrow, really give it an effort when I have like, I'm finally able to, to sit down and just not have other things to do. Cause I don't wanna start my month off like this. Hello. So I have gotten presentable because in about little over 10 minutes I am going to be on the feminist AF book club monthly book club chat for I believe it's the November book Rachel invited me to oh God. Rachel invited me to to speak be one of the speakers for the lot the chat this month the book discussion for firekeeper's daughter and I am so honored and thrilled to be able to talk about this book. I love this book. We know I love this book. I am a little nervous because I haven't properly like spoken about books in God knows how long. I haven't posted a video that wasn't a vlog in God knows how long. Um, I haven't been in like a live situation in so long. Also, I was so excited. I was having such a good day today and then it went downhill so fast. So I'm trying to... Um, tug scraps together and, and put on a, a face. Uh, I'm trying to do all that I can to be on right now. I put eyeliner on and a beret, so. Here goes. I am, like I said, really thrilled and excited to talk about this book, though. I do love this book so much, so hopefully that turns things around and just talking about something I love so much will bring my mood back up. I have my notes. I'm ready to go. I hope it goes well. I hope I don't make a fool out of myself. Good afternoon. Today is the 8th of December, almost like October, and I have about 90-ish, my mom's on a phone call, 90-ish pages left of For the Wolf. I am determined to finish this today. It has taken way too long to get through this book 
it's taking me entirely too long to finish this book also yes i know my skin is so dry i'm so sorry but i am finally um i finally found a rhythm with this book i finally really gotten into it i'm very invested and without spoiling anything i am tired of kiri and i'm curious to see where we're being led to for going into the the future sequel so i'm gonna sit down i'm gonna finish this and then oh <laughs> and then i am i was my plan was i'm reading this and the wolf and the woodsman is that what that's called um this month but i don't think reading them back to back is wise so i have to figure out what i'm going to read next for my tbr <laughs> right okay so let's talk about this i finished for the wolf like two days ago now and i'm torn actually i have a lot of mixed feelings about it it took me a minute to find a rhythm to find a flow with it to actually get into it i was maybe like 200 and something pages before i really started getting invested i do um know i'm going to have to reread this again when i am like in a clearer headspace just so i can see determine whether the sort of like I don't know almost disconnect that I was feeling reading the book was me or the book <laughs> I also feel like um towards the end it dragged on it was taking a really long time to actually get to a, the actual conclusion I also feel like um this could have just been a standalone but there's going to be a sequel the sequel I think follows Nev red's twin sister so we'll see i i don't think i'm as invested in nev's story truthfully even though i think this one is going to be more of like a snow white feel to it this one while i assumed it was just little red riding hood because of the title for the wolf the red cloak and the main character's name being red but it kind of felt more like beating the beast to me either way i love a retelling but what I did like, I really did um, enjoy the magic. Um, I love the whole like magic um, haunted almost forest and the concept of the second daughter and all that jazz. I love a retelling, like I said. I forgot what I was gonna say. Oh, I really wish that that maybe we had a dueling point of view storyline, that we had Eamon's point of view as well. Um, to really get in his head because just told through through red you know he's just like the quiet stoic brooding um forest man warden of the wilderwood as their relationship really developed it would have been cool to be in his head um but i know i said a bunch of things that i kind of uh i won't say disliked but like you know the the less positive i don't know i did enjoy the book especially once i got towards the end and got invested like i said i liked the concept like the magic i liked the the dark forest aspect yeah i just wish this had been a standalone i do intend to reread it oh biggest positive though for the first time in absolute ages i'm talking i don't know how long i have been inspired to mix up a new candle i have notes up here so that's really exciting. I have been very uninspired when it comes to candles lately. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna be working on that very soon. So now I am moving on to The Wolf and the Woodsman. Is this uh, too similar? We'll see. I don't think it is actually. I was afraid that it would be, but I reread the synopses of both and I feel like this is different enough and I'm super excited. And I put two polls out on Twitter and Instagram and this one on both. Also my mom told me to read this one next, so let's go.
is done by my friend Kate, the same one who painted Harry that lives on my wall. And it's my little Harry Fine Line Christmas sweater. I have finished The Wolf and the Woodsman. I finished it the other day. And honestly, I have about very similar thoughts about this book than I did for For the Wolf. Um, I'm kind of torn about this book as well. Actually, in the opposite vein of For the Wolf, where I thought For the Wolf um, should just be a standalone, wrapped up well enough that it doesn't need a sequel. I feel like this book could benefit from at least one sequel and be a duology because there's a lot of story, a lot of plot points crammed into one book and I feel like um, some story development um, could have happened between better between two books or some character arcs could have been better fleshed out, sorry about that in the background with a second book. I feel like there was so much happening. I couldn't really attach to characters. I feel like the the romance in this book was kind of almost overwhelming a little bit. I mean, I did root for it. Just That's just for no other reason than because I enjoy a romance in a, a book. Not necessarily because I cared about either character, character too much or, um, I don't want to say believed it, but that being said, I did, I do think I enjoyed my, the reading experience of The Wolf in the Woodsman more. I was able to get into it and become invested, I guess, in the story. I did enjoy the concept like I said I was able to get invested more I was able to read a lot faster um, consume more quicker kind of like understand more easier I do I'm pr pretty sure Ava Reed has a, another book coming out it's not a sequel to this book but it is set in the same world um, I probably will read it I do love like the aesthetic of it and like the the vibes of it so anyway i have to go right now because i'm getting ready to leave so i'll talk to you when i can way too close to my face so bye okay can you see me is this focus focus on me f -f focus on me okay hello we are about to go to the show but quick fit check eddie p takes nyc all right we have to go Bye.
Hello, good morning. <laughs> it's the next day. We're about to leave the hotel. But I realized I didn't tell you what I'm reading um, because I was supposed to do that before we left. But I haven't, also haven't read anything. I haven't had time. I am starting, maybe today, A Winter's Promise by Christelle Dabo. And um, it's funny because at the beginning, that's not my face of the year. I made one of my goals to read more translated books. And this is the first one in the last half of December. <laughs> anyway, so we're still in New York, as I said, and um, we're just hanging out until we catch the bus later. Now, Do you have anything to add, Dwayne? I had a great time. Such a great time. <laughs> Oh, actually, yes, review of the show. Jordan Fisher is absolutely impeccable. As far as I'm concerned, he is Evan D. Hansen. He is. 1,000%. So. Retweet. Post it. Send it. <laughs> Period. <laughs> Present Kingdom of Souls by Rena Barron. Performed by Robin Miles. Hello, hello. I'm just lounging. I am about to finish. I won't just promise I have about 20 pages left, but um, I just got a delivery from uh, Amazon and I was very confused because I haven't ordered anything. So I am assuming this is something from my wish list. So I'm going to open it right now and see what's what's inside. This is where my scissors, where did I put my scissors? There they are. I was also confused for a minute because I didn't know what this box was. I'm like, is this fairy loot? Because it's the black box, but then I saw the, the Amazon logo. Ooh, I see a gift bag. Oh, it's from Ashley. Merry Christmas, Ash. I don't know why I said it like that. Merry Christmas, Ash. <laughs> Drum roll. It's so cold. Oh my God, it's so, this book is so cold. 
What is it? What is it? What is it? Oh, good. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, so this is The Bones of Ruin by Sarah Raleigh. This book is very new on my radar. And actually, I was watching her video. I think it was books she wanted to read by the end of the year or something. And this was this is when I first heard about this. So thank you. This is amazing. This sounds so good. I'm excited to read this. It's about like um an African tight rope walker in Victorian London. Um and I know I think there's like a competition or something, an upcoming apocalypse. I'm excited. Oh I have to figure out where I'm gonna add this to my 2022 TBR. So thank you so much. Hello for me and my matching scarf and pajama ensemble. Anyway, I am finally sitting down to start reading today. Oh, I finished reading, um, what is that book called? A Winter's Promise Yesterday. I'm going to come back and talk about that later. That's not what I'm here to do right now. What I'm here to do is talk about how I'm diverting from my original TBR. Um, because as I was, you know, reading the books I had set up, I have fallen into a holiday romance mood. I'm assuming it's because my mom has spent the last year, but especially now watching Christmas holiday, Christmas romance movies like Hallmark and Lifetime. Um, Lifetime movies are better, but whatever. So as I fell into that mood, I did a little shopping and I wanted to share my plans for the end of this month. I plan to dedicate the last what week and a half two weeks of December to Christmas romances because I read them very quickly. I have four. I have three physical and I have an ebook. So I think I'm going to start with The Holiday Swap by Maggie Knox which is one of my book of the month books. I've really picked this because it has feels it's like the parent trap and the holiday put together so I think I'm gonna read that first and then Duke actually probably by Jenny Holl Jenny Holiday I'm saving the last two for authors I'm very familiar with um, the first of which is window shopping by Tessa Bailey and my ebook which is Mary Inkmas by Talia Hibbert I'm saving Talia for last mostly because other times I've done like I've been dread romance books um I didn't save Talia and then I kept comparing the rest of them and got irritated that they weren't living up to Talia Hibber books but anyway I'm really tired right now because I was supposed to get started doing this earlier but I've been working on no one reminded I always forget how exhausting setting up your bullet journal is and I'm setting up like two right now so I'm gonna start the holiday swap and catch up on YouTube videos that I haven't watched today. Merry Christmas Eve to everyone who celebrates. I mean, by the time you see this, it'll be January, so it doesn't really matter. But today is Christmas Eve, and, um... I'm excited and actually really excited for the holidays to be over if I'm being honest. I am feeling a little more festive than I usually do. But anyway, I said I was going to come back to talk to you since finishing A Winter's Promise. So let me do that really quick. So at the start of the year I said I wanted to read more translated works. And this is the only one that I've read this year, so that goal is rolling over into 2022. If you don't know this book, it by Christelle Debo is translated from French. Um, it's the first book of the Mirror Visitor Quartet, I believe. Is it a quartet? I think, I know the last final book just came out this year. Anywho, I don't know why I'm so winded. So I didn't know really what I was, what to expect going into it, but I did um enjoy my time in this world i am excited to continue the series it is more of a like sort of slower fantasy i suppose it's like sci-fi fan fantasy sci-fi like um i've seen like steampunk as a descriptor i enjoy the fact that it's very whimsical like i said it's sort of a slower fantasy it's not super action-packed or or dark or heavy it's just 
it's almost sort of slice of life in a fantasy setting almost that doesn't make sense but it's quirky it's whimsical it ha almost has like a almost like an Alice in Wonderland e feel to it not quite as extreme I guess as Wonderland but just that that um I guess because I'm used to reading more faster paced action bloodshed <laughs> constant trauma fantasy book so this is just it's cute it's fun it's it's intriguing um I don't know who to trust honestly at this point um but I so I'm really curious to see to continue the book it was a lot of um fun watching or or going on this journey with Ophelia and seeing her really come into her own especially towards the end I don't know how that's gonna work out for her going further in the series but fantastic fantastic so after reading this book I read the holiday swap I finished this yesterday read it in two days this one was something it was cute and what I'll say about this one this book reads exactly if you don't know this book is follows twin sisters who one twist twist one sister is a host on a reality baking show she there's an accident on set leaving her with a concussion and she loses her taste of smell and taste her sense what? her sense of smell and taste which is like a major problem as a baker so because she is currently in a competition of sorts with her co-host for the permanent position permanent gig for another baking show she pulls her twin sister who currently runs their family baking family bakery back home he pulls her into the scheme they swap places the way they did when they were kids they're identical twins and her sister takes over for her she takes over at the family bakery yada 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 hijinks ensue so this book reads exactly like a hallmark christmas movie i was gonna say hallmark or lifetime but specifically hallmark I say this in the nicest way possible, Lifetime usually has a bit more substance. Trust me, I've been watching nonstop holiday romance movies, honestly for a year because my mom's obsessed with them. But quick question, why is Craig from Degrassi in every single Lifetime Christmas movie this year? I mean good for him, get your get your get your bag, but like what's going on? Whatever it what's going on? Anyway, this reads exactly like a Hallmark Christmas movie in the way that like we're three days literally three days in and both of these sisters are in love they've each been like on a date and I'm sitting here like am I doing something wrong what, what's, what? <laughs> but like at the same time the same way you would watch a Hallmark or Lifetime you read this book knowing that it's going to be ridiculous knowing that it's going to be unrealistic and you just go with it of course this makes sense of course you're in love with this guy you've known for less than a week <laughs> but pushing all that aside and knowing what I'm getting into going into the book it was cute it was fun I find I'm really I really love romances romance books that involve baking I wonder why in, in fact when I'm thinking about it three of the projects I'm working on three of them two of them I involve baking at least main characters that bake and or cook in in some capacity so um once again i'm really drawn to those stories so this um being set like a baking world especially in like both sisters both aspects like tv baking i love great british bake-off i love all the baking shows and like the small town um traditional bakery it was so cute it was it was fun I wish the sisters personalities differed a little more or their voices a little bit more I didn't know that Maggie Knox were was the opinion for a writing duo so that's interesting yeah just reading this book made me feel like I want to move to a small mountain town uh, <laughs> and fall in love with a firefighter who has a outrageous dog so now I am going into my next holiday book which is I didn't bring it in with me which is um 
hold on had to run and get it i'm starting duke actually by jenny holiday so we've got a little bit of a royalty situation going on all i know about this one is that it follows a i think he's a duke or a lord or something baron of Lawden, heir to the duke of aquila the two main characters are best man and best woman of mutual friends wedding he's been dumped by a princess interesting okay so they're they're best man and best woman and they strike a friend they become friends i guess during the process and then more than friends and that's all i really know let's do this <laughs> drop of milk on my shirt and instead of wiping it, I tried to like fling it off so it wouldn't stain and now it's all over my book <laughs> it's all over the page of my book yep uh, there's my chocolate milk It, it'll probably stay in the same color, so I can lie. <laughs> I'm filming this on my phone again this seems to be this month's theme because I forgot to charge my camera battery but I just got something in the mail I know where this this package this gift came from I just really want to open it um, on camera and get into it I am so excited okay so I at least know what one of the things in here is I'm not sure about the others Okay, the package is from Princess from Castle Library. She told me she had ordered, she let me know she had ordered some things from my wish list. So first and foremost, thank you so much, Princess. You did not have to do that at all. No one ever has to send me anything. I think I mentioned before, I'm actually very bad at receiving <laughs> gifts. Like, look, I'm turning really red. But I also just really appreciate it a lot. Like, especially this year, I've gone back and forth debating, like, just stopping with content creation and just, like, feeling like um you know I nobody aside from like my mom cares so it is sometimes really nice to know that there are other people who are invested in what you're doing um and care about what you're doing and care about like, your opinions on things and um I forgot what I was going to say who also reach out to let you know that anyway so the first book like I said is If We Were Villains by ML Rio um I actually remember she recommended this book a while ago I was looking for um dark academia recommendations and the note from this says let's buddy read this I'm down I'm always down I don't know much about what this is about aside from the fact that it's a dark academia um, it says, enter the players. There were seven of us then, seven bright young things with wide precious futures ahead of us. Um, oh, there's a character who's released from jail. A decade ago, Oliver is one of seven young Shakespeare actors at the Delacour, Delacour Classical Conservatory, a place keen on ambition and fierce competition. 
Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. But in their fourth and final year, good-natured rivalries turn ugly in an opening night. Real violence invades the student's world of make-believe. Intriguing. So, somebody dies. So, next. <laughs> next is The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. This has been all over the entire book internet. So, I am really curious to see if this is worth the hype. This note says, I'm reading this now, so I hope you like it. Everyone's talking about it. I hope I like it too. Now I love a good romance. And in the last book, this is the only one I knew was in here. And I could cry, honestly. Finally, 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 my phone's sliding. I own The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. I can't. I cannot. Shaken. Shaken to my core. And this note says... Your TBR revisit made me buy this. Re read it. I haven't read it yet either. Thank you. Thank you. I can't wait to read this book. I can't wait to find that. I can't. I'm so excited. That I finally ow, own it. I can read it and just. I'm probably going to do a whole dedicated vlog to that for this. I think I might do that. Hello. Today. <laughs> Today is January 8th. Happy New Year. And I have not closed out this vlog. I've edited the entirety of the rest of the vlog and realized I have not, never finished it. So, um, that's what I'm here to do. I'm going to try to do this really quickly because I don't want to have to edit a 10 minute clip. So, the last time I was talking to you, I was reading Duke Actually by Jenny Holiday. Of the one two four of the four uh holiday romances i read i think this is one of my favorites i picked it up assuming it was more like holiday christmasy romance but this actually only takes place at christmas at the beginning and the very end of the book but that being said that is one of the things i really loved about this book i love the time the spanning of time one of the things you come to expect with um contemporary romances is the speed with which things happen and sometimes things are unrealistic but what i really loved about this book is the cultivation the growth of um max and danny's friendship first their relationship their friendship the building of their communication i love the fact that this really takes place over the span of basically a year in which we see the them grow as a pair. I, I just I love their banter. I love I just love them together. I just I just enjoyed so much of this and I just enjoyed the plot and just going on this adventure. That being said, all of the build up, all of the build up of the chemistry and the sex feelings as we're calling them in this book, and then we get to their first like encounter and I'm like that's 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 that okay all right so while i love their relationship and their friendship and their connection the the spicier bits were kind of just meh for me they weren't bad i've read worse but just you know okay another kind of pet peeve with this is the the ending the conflict we always have to have a conflict a lot of the times it's a miscommunication conflict and in this particular story it's really irritating because <laughs> their communication is such a strong point in this book it's such a core base of their friendship their whole relationship so for the situation to be blown into what it was didn't didn't um feel true to max and danny this one i i i oof. I do really enjoy this and I know this is is a second a follow a, a sequel I guess there's um a princess for Christmas and I want to go back and read that maybe for Christmas so after that I picked up window shopping by Tessa Bailey I was quite interested to see what this was going to give me Tessa Bailey I've read a lot of her stuff had some hits had some misses but I'm familiar with with I know kind of what I'm gonna go what I'm, what I'm gonna get going into it this one hmm, was interesting to me this wastes absolutely no time and I 
generally don't mind insta love or insta attraction i was gonna say in romance i don't really mind it period especially like insta attraction because that's a thing <laughs> but this ha this was too much this was too fast this was too insta this was too this was the part where it's like i'm concerned also i don't know i i don't know i can't really speak on it but it just feels like um who's what is the name of our main character stella i <laughs> stella okay jumping right into a relationship straight out of getting getting out of jail oh hello this book follows um in this book we follow stella and What's this man's name? Aiden. I should remember that. Stella and Aiden. Stella, they meet. Uh, Stella is looking at a uh, department store Christmas display window in on Fifth Avenue. And she's approached by Aiden who uh, asks her her honest opinion. She gives it to him. She's kind of rude. And he uh long story short he convinces her to apply for the job of the store's window dresser uh yeah turns out he is the store manager his family owns the the store this is like a grumpy sunshine pairing while wow, i love that this ha this was co a little concerning anyway like i was saying so stella is um just has just been out of prison for a month and i feel like her jumping straight into this intense relationship is a lot especially considering part of the reason she's in prison is because of an intense toxic friendship not to spoil anything also that if we had really dived into that that could have really been something for the plot but it was just kind of her being in prison and that whole relationship just felt um I don't know, I just wasn't utilized the way it could have been my batteries flashing, so I'm going to try to really speed through this. So I, what I really wish for this book, long story short, is that we could have taken the build up and relationship of this book, right, in the, like, the perfection, the perfection of that relationship and put, like, the sexy bits of this book in there and it would have been stellar. And then I closed out my reading with Mary Inkvist by Talia Hibbert. Of course I was going to close with Talia, let's be serious. I wasn't going to build myself so high and then drop down so far and it was worth it. I think this was like one of Talia's first published things and it follows... What are their names? It follows our characters. They, uh, the, the main man is a... What is his name? Our main dude is a tattoo artist he owns a tattoo shop he's like a tattoo prodigy sir hello and the main our main character she was a barista at the coffee shop that he frequented and he frequented for her um but in the beginning she's fired or no she quits and he provides her with a job at his tattoo shop hello and i don't have much to say talia hibbert can do no wrong in my eyes i just I this was it was quick it was shorter it seems shorter than like her, the other stuff I've read but like I'm also in desperate need of a thigh tattoo now like please I was already toying with the idea but now I need one done by a hot tattoo artist <laughs> that's all I really have to say I'll talk I maybe I'll do a whole video dedicated to Talia Britton talk more in depth about this book but I need to close this out so thank you this was December <laughs> thank you for watching if you did please give it a thumbs up if you like me feel free to subscribe all my places are down below so you can follow me and I'll follow you back and I'll see you very soon cash that's his name cash and still don't got it bye <laughs>